There are just so many fabulous applications to the six lines that we discovered in our first class, which are round and round, up and down, back and forth, zigzag, wiggle, and dot. Those six are shapes and lines. When you take shapes and lines and turn them into things, we create form. We can stay in shapes and lines, and that's called 2D drawing. Like, there we go, there's our little dog. It's all two-dimensional. Oh, there's his mouth too. Okay, but uh, if we start to draw the dog in a three-dimensional form, he starts to take on more form, see? F and that's what we call 3D, meaning he has dimension more than two dimensions. He has three dimensions and there's shading and light. So the same drawing done with the same material. Let me show you. This is so exciting because when you think and see in 3D, there are no barriers and you feel so confident. So here is a two dimensional drawing from our first class. We called him Herc. And everything I put in my two-dimensional drawing, see, um, let's make it a bear this time. I'm going to keep it a little simpler. Yeah, I don't want to do the zigzags yet. So here we have our little bear. We'll add a little zigzag for interest. And uh, there we go, Papa Bear. Even though I have shading, I don't have dimension. I've got to be careful though, because I'm starting to get some form here. Just a little bit of shading creates depth. So I want to keep it straight here. Now, let me show you why it's a little different in three dimensions. So in three dimensions, you have fronts and backs and depth. You can see you've got depth going this way. You can see from our exercises that we did how this works. So no longer do we just use circles, we use ellipses when we draw in three dimensions. So I'll put the same thing, I'll do the same lines. This one followed by this one. The only difference is they're a little bit curved. It looks like his head's gonna be twisted. Not quite sure why I did it like that, but I'm not gonna worry about it. Now two eyes, one eye's gonna be here, and one eye is going to be here. Yeah, it looks like he's bending over or something. Now the ears are on the sides here, so um, I'm going to see one ear here, but the other ear is going to be on the other side on this part, so it's only going to pop over like that a bit. So I have an ear on the other side of the head here. And this is a little, little, uh, little wonky here, so I'm going to just add it down like that. Oh! That's okay. I'll just incorporate that. Put a little mouth here, shade it in. And there we have the same, basically the same drawing, but it has more dimension to it. We add a little shading, and we're in business here, and we're starting a three-dimensional. You know, I think I'm going to switch to these. They keep your fingers a lot cleaner. Don't know why I never used them before in classes. One wonderful thing about teaching is you're always going to be learning. Oops, his head came off. Oh, well. He's a toy. He's on the end of a pencil. There we go. A little short pencil. One of those pencil savers. What I really wanted to show you was our cat project and after that, a puddle project. So, the cat project. We had so many people who asked for cats. And we've had like five or six cats, so I'm just going to show you how to draw some cats. You've got to know a little bit about cats. Either have a picture of cats or have your cat. And I want you to be exploring first before you start to think that maybe, oh, this is no good and start over. And oh, this is no good and start over. Just get to know what cats are, what they do, where their faces are like, what do they do with their tail, what shapes. Now, we're going to do a simple head shape first 
first in 2D and then in 3D. Now the 2D shape, cats are what we call a fivagon. So are pigs and many other animals. Fivagon meaning one, two, three, four, five. Shapes are great. You need to know some shapes in order to make form. Three-dimensional forms come from two-dimensional shapes. So that the shape here, when we're doing it in 3D, looks like that. Basically everything comes from the circle. That's another beautiful idea. And all circles come from a dot. It's just the, the first thing that was ever discovered. I believe the Egyptians, or maybe someone even before them. Then you can square the circle. See? So you can do the same thing with a fiveagon to get five, you see? You've got straight up here, two, three, four, five. Okay, now from there, you can add uh, uh, the simple one is called the J-foot cat, and it just comes down like this, and it's two-dimensional. Very simple, right down the middle. You know, lines of uh, like this are great for keeping your drawing on intact, and you can erase them later. But for our little friend here, our 3D cat, we do another ellipse, and we add another two ellipses on each side because we're going to make it a little more realistic. Now these are all the steps. You need to practice them to get good at them. So on the J-foot cat, we do it like this. And this is more of an animation style, but this is for more realistic drawings of cats, something like this. And you can see all the steps here of how I drew this using the circles. So here we are. Here, looks like we could make a good owl out of this too. And the possibilities are endless. Now, just to add a little foot here like that, you see how important it is to draw millions of these circles and ellipses. You know, if you're at work and you're bored and you've already got your paycheck for the week and you feel you've done enough, sit there every day for 10 minutes and draw circles over and over and over and over and over. I guarantee you, your drawing skills will be elevated in one week. Okay, next, hind legs. On the two-dimensional cat, it's simple, and we just go like that. So th this is easier to understand. You don't have to think too much here. You just have to do. And that's how we teach a lot of people starting out, is just do it. Get good at it and feel confident. Now here we're thinking a bit more. We have another leg that we can't see behind these legs, but it's, there's still a foot there. So. I'm sort of drawing things through. This part of the leg is behind this whole part of the body and these legs are in front of this whole part of the body. So we started with this part of the body, put in these legs, now we've put in these legs. So that's one, two, three sections. But check out what's happening here. See the cat has shoulders and uh, depending on how good you want to make this drawing, you might want to look at your cat's feet and see exactly. I'm just going to keep it simple. And instead of going this way here, I'm just going to go like that. See, I'm going to invert the curve. It's kind of like the yin-yang symbol, you see? And that's what I've done here. I've just inverted. And how do I invert the curve? I just... Well, where am I here? Let me see. Oh, there it is. Oh, it's right there. See, this one got a little dark in front. It's right here. Oh, but this one's nice. It's already got these little feet thing in. Feet in, and then I invert the curve here. Whoa, nice. There's the bottom of the cat. Uh, how about a little erasing here just to clean up things? <laughs> So, uh, the eraser, I can clean up a few things here. Cleaning up the lines. Notice the eraser is helping me to draw. Okay, next. I might have put the shoulders a little too high, but I can adjust that. Uh, I don't have a cat in front of me, so. Now the back one, I darken. And once again, put the feet in. And those are the legs at the back of the cat. Okay, uh, I don't even think I'll put the shoulders in there. I think I'll just erase that too. 
and I'm cleaning up my drawing with my eraser, just kind of loosening it up. Whoop, oh, there we go. I'm going to take my blender here now. Darken it up in areas. Oh, you look, look like a little stripey cat. I even go through here with that. We have a little cat called Buttons like this. And if you know about cats, some of them take, take a little walk one day. They're so polite. There, now, watched on the cat's face, a million, look at the cats. I mean, you can go online and get punch in cats on Pinterest and get a million cats, literally a million. And they're all different face shapes. But what I like to do is just make a little triangle here on the bottom half. These are called guidelines. And, you know, the cats look like they have um, eyes on an angle, but honestly, they don't. They're straight on their face, just like us. Now, I'm doing really simple here, uh, but it's their eyebrows that go up like this that make it look like the eyes are on an angle. Ooh, he's got an attitude. Where's my food? Or maybe if you know anything about cats and you have a dog somewhere, Oh, I'm going pretty fast here. Look, cat dish, ellipse, ellipse, two ellipses. See, one small, one big, join them up, cat dish. Okay, ah, oh, that's good. Okay, there's the cat. There is food there, but she wants her something different. So if I did this again, oh, the ears, just add them on the side, a couple, not a couple. They've got these all over the place. So I might have, might lower the um, these the next time, but you saw how I did it. Now, cats, I've noticed something about cats. Dogs can have pointy tails, but most of the cats I've observed have a round tail. Now, I don't know why, but that seems to be the case. So there we go. And I can adjust with putting the tail in a different place. I could draw this a few more times and I'd start to get this cat looking pretty good. So that's our cat. We may be doing more as we progress with our course. What about me? Oh, we forgot this little guy. You know, these uh, little easy 2D drawings can be 3 d would up simply with a little bit of work. So actually this 3D drawing could be turned into a fairly decent drawing here. I'm gonna have a little fun with this one. I'm gonna put this cat in a vest. Um, you might think, if you don't have a cat, you might think, well, that's a little strange, but you know what? My oldest granddaughter dresses her cat up, her dog up for, as a dinosaur for Halloween. Let me see, how about big eyes? Uh, there, and not quite as mad now, see, because the eyes are big and they're up. This is cute, actually. <laughs> and uh, uh, what else could I do? Well, you know, I'm going to take the back legs and the tail for now. And I'm going to give it a little more of a human look, as they do in cartoons, and put arms on my cat. And I think this, I think this cat, maybe the tail is going to be on the ground behind him. But I might even leave the tail right out. I'm not sure if Mickey Mouse has a tail. So there, now see what I've done here? I've added things to my cat and I've animated the cat from a realistic looking cat to an animation. I've got kind of like the tail there. Put a band-aid on it. And once again, you can take your blending stump and you can get this looking quite 3D also. Shadow, there you go. Cats, cats, cats.